let's see what if we can figure out what x plus 3 times x minus 3 is. And I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can work this out. Well, one way to tackle it is the way that we've always tackled when we multiply binomials is just apply the distributive property twice. So first, we could take this entire yellow x plus 3 and multiply it times each of these two terms. So first, we can multiply it times this x. So that's going to be x times x plus 3. And then we are going to multiply it times, we could say this is negative 3. So we could write minus 3 times, now that's going to be multiplied by x plus 3 again. x plus 3. And then we apply the distributive property one more time, where we take this magenta x and we distribute it across this x plus 3. So x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. And then we do it on this side. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. And what does this simplify to? Well, we're going to get x squared. And we have 3x minus 3x. So these two characters cancel out. And we are just left with x squared minus 9. And you might see a little pattern here. Notice, I added 3, and then I subtracted 3. And I got this. I got the x squared. And then if you take 3 and multiply it by negative 3, you are going to get a negative 9. And notice, the middle terms canceled out. And one thing you might ask is, well, will that always be the case if we add a number and then we subtract that same number like that? And we could try it out. Let's, let's talk in general terms. So if we, instead of doing x plus 3 times x minus 3, we could write the same thing as, instead of 3, let's just say you have x plus x plus a times x minus a times x minus a. And I encourage you to pause this video and work it all out. Just assume a is some number, like 3 or some other number, and apply the distributive property twice and see what you get. Well, let's work through it. So first, we can distribute this yellow x plus a onto the x and the negative a. So x plus a times x, or we could say x times x plus a. So it's going to be, that's going to be x times x plus a, and then we're going to have minus a, or this negative a, times x plus a. So minus, and then we're going to have this minus a times x plus a, times x plus a, times x plus a. Notice, all I did is I distributed this yellow this, I just distributed this big chunk of this expression. I just distributed it onto the x and onto this negative a. I'm multiplying it times the x, and I'm multiplying it by the negative a. And now we can apply the distributive property again. x times x is x squared. x times a is ax. And then we get negative a times x is negative ax. And then negative a times a is negative a squared. And notice, regardless of my choice of a, I'm going to have ax and then minus ax. So this is always going to cancel out. It didn't just work for the case when a was 3. For any a, if I have a times x and then I subtract a times x, that's just going to cancel out. So this is just going to be cancel out. And what are we going to be left with? We are going to be left with x squared minus a squared, x squared minus a squared. And you could view this as a special case. When you have something x plus something times x minus that same something, it's going to be x squared minus that something squared. And this is a good one to know in general. This is a good one to know in general. And we could use it to quickly figure out the products of other binomials that fit this pattern here. So if I were to say, quick, what is x plus 10? times x minus 10. Well, you could say, all right, this is just going, this fits the pattern. It's x plus a times x minus a. So it's going to be x squared minus a squared. If a is 10, if a is 10, a squared is going to be 100. So you can do it really quick once you recognize the pattern.